Welcome back to episode three of the Digital Pen Pals podcast. How is everyone doing? My name is Lincoln or Tux Bodai, and I'm here with my co-host, Zach Shirts. Welcome back, guys. Um, so, uh, if you're new here, uh, we, me, me and Tux are both uh, streamers and artists and people that are trying to do content creation. We're not trying to. We are. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. We <laughs> are. Sorry. Sorry. It's about the mindset, right? <laughs> so, wherever you're listening to, thank you very much. But you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, Anchor, Breaker, Google Podcast, Pocket Podcast, and Radio Public. Um, so, thank you very much for listening. And feel free to go follow those on Twitter. We're at Digital Pen Pals Podcast. And Instagram, we're at Digital underscore Pen underscore Pals. Uh, so thank you thank you and welcome how are you doing today zach i'm doing pretty fantastic it's uh been kind of a crazy week um been kind of rough on my streaming schedule but uh honestly it's it's been great it's been fantastic a lot of uh leaps and bounds what about you yeah (laughs) it has been pretty crazy as well today is as of recording this is sunday we generally record on thursday but it's the holidays and we decided to start this podcast in December. So (laughs) (laughs) good timing on us. (laughs) We're, we're straight up chilling. So in that light and in that theme, we thought that today we would talk about just that scheduling. So what does scheduling have? (laughs) Let's talk about our weaknesses, which we have no authority because we're bad at it. (laughs) But uh, (laughs) no, at least I do. Um, yeah, so scheduling is like a huge thing um, as we're all trying to become artists or doing whatever we want to do creatively. It's like super hard to find the time to 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 get all our projects and things done because we can we can tend to be dreamers as artists. We can have a lot of dreams, a lot of hopes for, oh, I want to do this or I want to do this in the future. Like, you know, I, I keep saying, you know, my dream is like I want to do make more YouTube videos. I want to make a comic in the future. Um, but unless I start, you know, figuring out how to logistically make that happen. I don't know if it'll ever happen. It'll just remain a dream. And that's kind of the scary part as artists is we we're we're a bunch of daydreamers and sometimes we're unable to finish the things that we start or or even start the things that we really want to do. Yeah, I've found that as an artist, I everything I want to do requires a large amount of time, but everything else in life requires a large amount of time. So to become an artist, you have to set yourself to time to schedules and put yourself to something and set yourself to it and sometimes it's really hard because we're human and we procrastinate and we say we're going to do something and then the time escapes us family happens or school happens or work happens or we're tired or a new game comes out or there's a million excuses and every time anybody tells me oh i want to be a better artist but dot 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 it's always some sort of excuse and that's not to say I'm exempt because I've I've used those same excuses as well. Me particularly, I am very strapped for time because I work full time and I try to stream like two to three hours about three to four times a week. And so that's like very long days and it makes me very exhausted. So that's my excuse, but nothing's an excuse because you want to be a great artist and you got to be different than everybody else you gotta if you want to be different you gotta do what's different you gotta take on those habits that are that other people are not doing right i think self-motivation i think we kind of talked about the last podcast a little bit um how being motivated to learn and to grow is is an important key to being successful and being able to actually finish those projects and yeah i'm the same right with you right now at least you know currently i'm working full time uh, for this month, uh, just cause scheduling's weird with, uh, with job, with my job and stuff. But, um, yeah, uh, it, it's been kind of stressful for me to try to do like all the things that I want to do or feel like, you know, I, I need to do. And, you know, it was interesting cause one night I, I sat down and I kind of realized I was like, you know, I work eight hours, then I come home and then how long do I stay up? <laughs> I'm like, wow, I actually work like 16 hour days. Like that's kind of insane. Um, and so I think there's kind of like this weird idea that you have to be grinding basically uh 
you know, it kind of takes me back to like one of my favorite YouTubers, Casey Neistat, you know, talking about the grind and him, you know, he was living in New York at the time and stuff like that. He's kind of like the person I reference to, to kind of when I imagine like the grind, you know, he was doing vlogs every day and being, you know, doing that creative project for so long. And he eventually kind of just like took a step back um, from that. And um, I think there's, there's kind of a nice balance between, you know, doing that level of like going going ham and learning and and doing all these things but there's also like a nice balance of like hey you need to balance your personal life and you need to you know take time for you and um so i think there there's some sort of balance I, i'm still trying to find it um but this week i kind of realized you know i am in control of my own schedule you know i don't have to do anything but it's what i choose to do and like when i choose to do it that's important and i think the the really difficult part too is is not the the working really hard which working really hard is is difficult but it's a it's a thing that if you want to go somewhere in life you you've got to find you got to do it in some way or another and that that doesn't mean you're exerting yourself physically always all the time but working hard covers a wide variety of things but the one of the hardest parts i've found is working really hard and then getting little to no results like <laughs> yeah that's the hard that. part is about being a smaller content creator and, and just a starting content creator is really one of the hardest parts is starting because once you once you get an accomplishment and once you start get the ball rolling, it's kind of like, right, you're on a you're on a hill and you got to push this ball up the hill. And then, but then once you get to the top of that hill, once you hit a, a good spot, the ball's going to start rolling on its own and you got to start chasing that ball. You got to ride the wave. You got to start chasing it. And and you're going to face a bunch of different hills and it's going to be hard sometimes and then other times it's going to seem really easy and you can make easy content at, once you're you're getting that ball rolling but it's really difficult starting I've found and it feels bad sometimes when you don't you don't meet the goals that you set for yourself or you're you, you're comparing yourself to others cuz that's a thing we do as humans is we we compare ourselves and it's kind of it's kind of hard sometimes <laughs> Right. Um, I, I don't want to complain too much, but that's <laughs> that's one thing that if you're seeking to do content creation or be an artist is at the beginning, it's very hard to find satisfaction. So you kind of just have to find satisfaction in your own work and say, I made this and I really like it. And whether or not other people like it doesn't change my opinion on it. Right. Yeah, that, that's the really hard part is comparing yourself to like it, it's almost like, you know, because I've I've been like obsessed with like numbers lately and trying to, you know, oh, how many X followers do I have? And like, how many blah, 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 this and that. And, you know, that's not really what it's about. It's, you know, I have to kind of remember like the base of my dream is like, you know, like I want to be able to do this as a living. And it's not, you know, how many people are following me or subscribe to me or something like that. It's, it's, it's gotta be more because I'm, I'm really in this for the long run and not, you know, because if I'm just focusing on number stuff, you know, I'm never going to be happy. And I've realized that as, you know, I've been able to start growing a following more on TikTok and and stuff it just almost almost like the numbers become kind of numb to me where i keep wanting more and more and more and it's like it's almost kind of addicting it to that extent and so like that's why i've been kind of realizing i'm like i need to just kind of chill out you know i have high goals and stuff to you know gain x amount of followers you know hopefully in a roundabout you know a uh, roundabout time for for a goal like a scheduling frame i guess but um yeah it can get kind of dangerous when you when you base your value off of like followings and stuff like that so um you know, I, I, I've, I've had a lot of um, good experiences just, like, focusing on, like, things that I want to draw or I want to do. Uh, making videos, like, because I love, that's my other love is making videos. So, you know, making art and making videos is almost similar to me where I, I love doing both. And it's it's really nice to finish, you know, like, a single little project or something and be happy with how it turned out. And there's still, like, videos on my YouTube channel that I'm, you know, that are good examples and artwork as well that I still look back on. I'm like, you know, I'm so proud that I did that. I can't believe I did that. And no matter if it gets 20 views or a million views, like I'm still just as proud of it. Yeah. I've, I've found that, that projects have really helped me like move forward and grow. Um, and like projects are almost like what helps us like schedule. Right. So it's like you, you go to like schedule something. You're like, Hey, I'm going to draw this, this much every single day. But it's like, well, what is, what is it that, that you're working towards? Like having having a project to work towards really helps um, manage time so that you can, you know, like have keep yourself accountable and, and keep working on something. Because if you're not working towards something, then what's the point? What have what have you found projects to help you and Zach? 
as far as scheduling. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. Like projects is like huge, um, you know, and it doesn't have to be like you say project and you think of like this huge thing. I mean, at least like at least that's what I've learned. Like when you go to school and they say there here's a project and it's like a big thing, right? Um, mm -hmm. That's like the connotation, right? And so like, I feel like for me, I realize that projects don't have to be like this some big huge thing. I mean, they can be. Uh, but they really can be short term. They can be like, oh, today I want to finish like a little thing or like a little comic book or something. And, you know, I've done that before where I've, you know, it, it took me longer than I thought. But, you know, I started a little project where I'm like, I'm going to do like a little comic book series and I'm going to use the Instagram format. So it fits on um, like two Instagram posts and um, people really liked it and it turned out awesome. Uh, same thing happened with my uh, art sticker designs that I was doing. I, you know, I had made a few art stickers. I kind of was interested in starting up a sticker shop and stuff. And, you know, I was talking to you and uh, I was trying to figure out, like, you know, how how can I do, should I do more and how should I organize stuff? And you'd mentioned, hey, you should do categories. I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. So I took what random stickers I had, variety, and I, and I divided them into, okay, well, here we go. We got animals, we got space themes and things like that. And I eventually was able to create four different themes and uh, I, that was what kept me going on Twitch for like probably like two to three weeks. I was just working on art stickers the whole time and people loved it. Uh, it was such a fun experience and um, it was just so refreshing and so like uh, revigorating to see like a final product be like, holy crap, I ended up making 24 stickers. Like that's insane to me. And uh, yeah, I think for me that, that that was like the biggest project that I've accomplished thus far is, you know, making me feel really, really happy with the final product and and kept me motivated the whole time to keep improving. And by the end of that, like just to add on to like the last little bit is like by the end of it, I was like drawing every single day so much sketching, doing final line work, coloring. I had it down to a science where I was actually pretty quick at doing it. And I felt like I could almost draw anything at that point. And I've since lost that because I haven't been doing it every day, but it just goes to show you that doing some, a little bit of something every day, like holy cow, it adds up so quick. Yeah. And I, I can, I can attest to that too. Recently I've been, trying to work on enamel pin designs because I, I make and sell enamel pins. I'm actually launching my newest one on Monday when this podcast releases. Which, so, you can, so quick little ad. You can find yeah, that go check, at go check that out. <laughs> tuxpins.com. It's a little seal. It's the self-love seal. It's promoting self-love. So when you when you feel alone, when you feel like you're a little seal on an iceberg, you, you can look at the pin and remember, I'm my own best friend. I'm super cool. Oh, um, adorable. And so I, I kind of like added a theme to that one. But so for this new pin design, because most of my pin designs, I'll, I'll sketch it out, and then I'll draw it, and then I'll say, okay, that's good. But my newest one, I want to feature an axolotl on it. Yeah, and so that what I be did great. is three separate streams, I just practiced drawing axolotls. And initially, I was like, oh, I really like this, so this is going to be the pin. But then I was like, oh, I'll just keep learning how to draw axolotls, I'll keep redoing it, I'll keep stylizing it. And then I finally kept doing it, and so now I'm at a point where it's like, okay, I like this style of axolotl, I like this pose... And I haven't even made the final thing yet, but I'm super happy with all the sketches I have. And so now I get to look at the sketches and be like, okay, let's step back. I've spent this whole week learning how to draw axolotls, learning how to get it to look cute and nice. All the while I'm looking at other pin designs of uh, in like similar veins, not necessarily axolotl pins, but like cute animals and being like, okay, which ones catch my eye? And then taking those attributes and adding it. So this axolotl is going to have uh, blue forget-me-not flowers on it, and it's a little axolotl. It's got these beautiful th uh, flowers, and I'm so excited for it um, because, I, personally, it's... I say this when I release a new pin, but it is my favorite pin so far. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> um, right now, my favorite pin that I made is is my seal one. I have a blue, a pink, and a brown one, and the blue one's my favorite right now. But once I get this axolotl, that is going to take place as my favorite one. Um, but... Just having that of, hey, this is what I'm learning to draw. Like, now I'm confident in drawing axolotls. And you can almost do that in anything. If you draw, if you're like, okay, I want to learn to draw, let's say, the, the male head or just heads in general. And you say, okay, I'll draw five heads a day. And it's working towards this project of I want to do a self-portrait. Or I want to draw a picture of my friend. Or, hey, I really like Ray from Star Wars. So I'm going to draw a cool picture of Ray. And so you practice drawing heads every single day until you're confident enough that you can say, cool, I can draw right now. Like, I know how to draw heads. 
and you look at a picture of Ray and you're like, cool, I learned about these facial features. I learned about doing this because I spent this this X amount of time learning how to do it. And so having that goal to work towards is really helpful. And then at the end, you look at the picture of Ray that you've drawn and you're like, wow, this is really cool looking. I work towards this and then you can post it online and you can share it with your friends and regardless whether or not your friends like it. So say, say you do post it online and it gets no likes, gets no attention, nothing, which I bet it would because if you've worked on it, obviously it'll, it'll get attention. But if it doesn't get any attention, you still have the satisfaction of here I was at point A and now here I am at point B. This is how much I've improved over this short amount of time and this is what I've accomplished because I set myself to that. And that's what projects can do for you. So whether or not you're trying to sell something, whether you're making a gift, or whether you're just doing something for yourself, projects are a powerful and satisfying way to improve your art. And that's why I think this, this is my hypothesis, but that's why one of the reasons I think that they assign them in school so that you can see how you've improved and it's to keep you drawing. Like right. that's, the, that's why they give you homework in school, right? Is so you can go home and you can continue working on it. I Obviously, I, I didn't necessarily go to art school, so I think Zach can shed a bit of more light on the, the homework aspect of that. Yeah, yeah, definitely homework is it's interesting because no one wants to do it, but you always know it's going to help you with when it comes to, you know, school, homework for art, you know. Uh, yeah, I studied illustration in school, um, and... Uh, it, it, it was kind of it's kind of weird because when when you're first starting out you feel like just you never want to do any of the homework really you want to learn you want to be able to draw your own style that, that like that's, that's the big thing i saw in school is like a lot of people um sometimes they would refuse to draw realistically and they wanted to draw in their own style uh which was fine but that kind of defeated the whole purpose of learning um kind of like in lo- the last podcast we talked about humility which is kind of cool why all of these podcasts kind of tie into each other one to another um and you have to have some sort of humility in order to like be like, okay, I'm going to forfeit whatever style or whatever I want to do, whatever career I'm trying to pursue. I'm not going to draw like that. I'm going to draw the way they're trying to teach me because it's going to teach you something. And, you know, that's why they divide all the classes up and all the different homework. You study specific features of the face. You study specific fu- um, like uh, foundational like ways to draw lines, how to do line quality, um, you know, thicker or thinner lines and where you should put them and where not to put them and um, how to mix colors. Like we're not even painting anything, but we're learning how what colors mix together to make other colors. And you use all this information to eventually build up your art information to be able to make any art you want. Um, And I think that's the fun thing. Like I said before, Art is a continual thing. You're always improving. Even the best of the best are still improving. And that's what's crazy is um, they're already leaps and bounds ahead of, you know, normal artists. But it's interesting to them. They could probably see how much they've improved over time. And um, I think that's what's really cool is that the learning and the growing never stops. It's a continual process. And you may think you've already reached your, your potential, but there's so much more you could do. It, it's kind of insane. I don't even know if anyone's even achieved the level of, of, of art that, you know, we're capable of as human beings. I think it's kind of interesting to think about that. Um, yeah. But yeah, the importance of homework is, is, is real. You, you need to have little things, even if you're not in school. You can always, that's why these projects are important is because it's almost like you're self-assigned homework. Uh, but these projects can be fun. You can make them fun. And, and you know, some projects that I worked on in school, some were further, funner than others. But um, really, if I had a good idea or concept for the homework where they're like, okay, come up with some idea and then do a painting off of that. And if I thought hard enough and I planned it out and studied it long enough, I would come up with a really cool idea, just like uh, Lincoln's um, new pen that's coming out. Uh, It has a lot of thought behind it and, um, you know, a lot of practice behind that final product. And I think the process can be just as fun as having the final product. Um, And so... um, you know, having projects is basically like your little way of doing homework. So what advice would you give then to people, for example, uh, like me that are self-taught and they're doing, say, for example, like YouTube lessons or like they're, they're, they're just taking whatever lessons they can find online, but 
none of those lessons or anything have necessarily homework. It's almost just like tutorials or, or like guides or like, hey, this is this is how value works or this is how form works. Yeah, um, I would recommend, like what we did a lot, a lot of our assignments actually, like in a lot of my painting classes, uh, they were called master studies, so or master copies. And you would make master copies, you would find an artist that inspires you. Um, and you can do this, like apply this to like tutorials you're watching or whatever. If there's an artist working on a piece and you and you want to learn how they did it, um, and they're showing you the piece and they're taking you along the journey, I would recommend maybe trying to copy that, even if it's not completely accurate or if it's like in a different whatever. Uh, you're at least copying um, what they've done. And I, I've learned a lot from uh, taking... And this can be kind of hard, tricky, too, when you're doing master studies because, uh, well, like in the world of painting, uh, paintings are kind of hard to figure out because there's also the texture aspect to the paint. It's not just the colors, but a real actual oil painting in person or acrylic or whatever actually can have texture. Um, and you can see their brush strokes and see how they did it or what kind of brush they were using. Um, and so that gets kind of harder with more specifically painting because you just Google images, you try to find the best image, but sometimes the color can be off because the camera that took the photo wasn't very good or you know, you're not able to see the texture because it's not in person. So that gets kind of hard. But um, when it comes to digital art, which I think majority of, of us are, are digital artists, I think you can take any piece of artwork you find and just try to deconstruct it. Try to figure out how they did it. You're like, oh, maybe they laid down this color first and you start to learn their process. And so I think that's the biggest thing that I took away from school is that you you learn to look at things and be like, hmm, how did they di do that? And slowly you start to figure out um, some people reveal their secrets, some other people don't. You just have to guess. Um, but by the end of it, you, when you're able to copy something like close, relatively close to what it um, looks like for the final product of theirs, um, it's kind of interesting to be like, wow, that actually looks pretty similar. Like I did a pretty good job. And then each time you do that, you start to learn about how they start to do things and how they're thinking. You get into their mind, you get into their head, and that eventually gets you to the point where you're able to just copy just about anything. And, um, you know, th like that being said, you know, if you're doing master studies, like I've done some uh, like screenshots and stuff and try to do little studies from that. Um, you know, I always accredit, you know, the screenshot I used and, you know, I'm not claiming it my own artwork. Uh, that's an important thing to do. But, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's just a good way to practice and study. And I think, you know, I know you've been doing that, Lincoln, with a few people. You've been copying uh, some of their, their different techniques and things. Um, and so it's, it's, it's important to learn um, from other artists and be humble enough to, to look into people that inspire you and try to figure out how did they do that? Because that's, that's exactly what you need to do to learn. Yeah, and I think studies are one thing that I've, I've been trying to do recently more because I feel like for me – it's weird. I always, the idea of studies to me are really boring and oh yeah, I have like a weird opinion towards, like I, I don't know. I guess the, it's weird because there's this weird line between, oh, am I copying this? Like, is this really my work? Um, and it's like something when you're done with it, you kind of feel weird sharing it. Like, Hey, I took this person's art and I literally just copied it. Like, look, I did it. <laughs> and it's like, well, how much of that is, is like yours or how much does that come from the artist's beautiful composition and color choice? And all the decisions that they made that you didn't even know they made, but you were just copying it. Right. Um, but I think studies were one of the things that I, I like, I'm not excited to do them. But then every single time, without fail, whenever I do a study, I'm always learning something and I'm always having a great time. Yeah. Um, I've seen you improve, honestly, from what I've seen. Yeah, and studies, too, are another thing that I, when I first heard of them, I thought I had, like, discovered some sort of, like secret or like some sort of like people do this like what yeah. and like as someone who like has never taken any like formal art training really like when i heard about studies i was like this is so bizarre like people do this what but yeah. then like looking into it and reading about it and reading about like the history of art like artists of the past would do the same exact thing and they'd use it as a way to like spiritually connect with the artist that made that piece of like artists that are long gone and so i thought that was super fascinating and that's that was one thing where i was like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna start doing like that that's cool like that's like a cool experience to like try and get into the artist's headspace and be like what was he thinking when he was doing that and and we'll never be able to fully 
understand what he was thinking when they were doing that or what uh, he or she was thinking, but will get into their head and be like, oh, maybe this was something that I learned from this piece or even if the artist wasn't thinking about that because it's subconscious and it's it's just skill. It's like, wow, this is something I learned from this piece. Right. And studies, they've, they've helped me so much. In fact, I, I recently did a, a, like a landscape. So I've been doing like a handful of things with studies. So I do, I take other people's art and then I, I try and redraw it with the composition and colors and value and stuff. Um, I was just, talking out of nowhere there those were just words i threw in the air i'm i take a, another person's art and i try to draw it the best i can that's the best way i could say it i don't know my art terms guys feel free to call me out um i i still need to learn all my terms and stuff you're good um, but i take other people's art and i try to draw it, like art pieces that i like um and then the other one i do is i take landscapes that i like or um like environments that i like and i try to draw to redraw those i the most recent one i did was a like a desert scene that i really liked how it turned out i think i showed you that one yeah i like that one a lot um but i i want to do them more because i'm really inspired by desert scenes and by uh like arctic scenes and i want to do some sort of combination between desert and arctic scenes because i think there's some cool mashups because i think it's just cool to mix two things together so i want to take like desert and arctic and then mix it with western and cow uh, sorry western and medieval and have a really interesting setting and it's like a cold snowy frozen desert with medieval cowboys <laughs> that'd be cool yeah <laughs> and, i think those two things are similar too like yeah and, and that's what's like getting into artist heads is you start to figure out like all like it's kind of hard because a lot of like the original ideas in quotations are kind of already taken uh and, but there's a lot of niches that you can combine to create a new original idea. It's kind of like um, getting like clippings and making them into a collage. Uh, is it collage? Is that right? That sounds wrong for some reason. <laughs> uh, but you basically are mixing and mashing things together to create a new original idea. Um, and um, yeah, if, like with master studies, it, it, it's really like um, if it makes you feel weird or it's, it's still kind of a weird concept, if you think about it, a lot of artists do car, uh, like, like uh, music artists. That is, they do a lot of covers of songs that they like, um, and eventually, every now and again, they'll they'll make their own original music and they try their hand at it. Um, and so, you know, just like them, we're the same. We're just more like there's a visual um, thing instead of like an audio, right? And so we have to learn how to um, tune our hands to the to the notes to learn how to make art. And it's kind of interesting too because I took um, I had a, I was required to take a few history of art classes. Um, I'm, my memory isn't very good. I have a good short term memory of memorizing things, but after the fact, I kind of forget. I remember ideas, but I don't remember specifics. Um, so yeah, forgive me if I any of this is wrong, but I do remember. I think it might have been it was either Michelangelo or somebody that was like you know insanely great sculptor, right? And they were actually studying people that were older than them before, you know, they made it big. Uh, they were studying other artists and sculptors that were incredible. And they would sit there and they would do drawings and do other sculptures and stuff, copying those artists. And so even the greatest of the greatest did that. And so it's, it, it's not something that seems like you're copying or whatever, as long as you're doing it to learn and you recognize that that's all that matters. Um, yeah, you do get into trouble though. If you're like, I'm copying this, I'm going to claim it as my own artwork, then that's not good. But um, it's it's definitely really awesome to to do master stud master copies and uh, it's something I haven't done it in a while. I think I did it um, a couple semesters ago, just before I graduated. But um, yeah, it's something I've been meaning to get back into. Even if that's you know you can even take pictures on your phone or something and try to re recreate them. If you find something cool or some cool colors, try using that. I mean, anything and everything can be some sort of study. And what you're doing is training your brain to create a visual um, library because people don't just draw stuff out of their heads, although it might look like it. Um, those people that look like they can, it's because they've taken the time to build up that visual library of things, that visual catalog of, of things that they've studied. So if you start just studying hands or you start learning to draw cars, your brain automatically starts to catalog those things and they become part of your repertoire. And I think that's 
why doing these little projects and things is so important even if it's like the smallest thing it's just another little step towards getting better yeah and always make sure you're having fun with it too and you're you're moving forward like one thing that i saw recently that i really wanted to do so i was watching the new or it's not new anymore but i was watching the rise of skywalker uh the the ninth star wars movie which i really like and a lot of people don't really like it and that's okay i liked um, it you're okay Tux. <laughs> we're fine but um, I was looking at a few of the scenes on uh, when they're on the planet Exegol, and I'm like, oh, I want to just take this scene, this composition, and I just want to draw it because the colors on that planet, it's just like the darks and the, like just the blues and just the t- like it's it's very two tone, and so I want to try and approach that from a like a study standpoint, and I feel like that would be like it'd be a pretty easy environment to do because it's like very very intense lightning lighting. And very just two colors almost. Oh yeah, and, and to and kind so of go with that that's like too. One thing I want um, to work on. I had a professor where he assigned us. It was for I think perspective class or something. Uh, they eventually kind of changed it to be a little bit more like storyboarding slash uh, perspective class. But at the time I took it, it was perspective um, with a little bit of stuff thrown in for storyboarding. Um, but what was interesting is they had us do I forget I think it was like a hundred or something. We had to do like a hundred um, or so. I think maybe it was fifty, maybe. But we'd have to watch a movie, and we'd pause it every once in a while. And because you know, um, filmmakers are known for this, making compositions. Um, that's a fundamental skill to learn as an artist: how compositions work, and how to balance out you know, uh, the space and the format that you're working on. And so uh, he had us watch a movie, pick a movie, pause it every every so often. And we would literally just draw, like, just with black and white, no, like, detail, nothing, just basic shapes and stuff. And we would draw out the scene and just to see how things look. And by the end, you have all these little thumbnail squares, like, very, very tiny. They're not very big. And you just have this whole list of of things like that. And so, like, that helps you learn to think, like, basically, like, a filmmaker would. Because visually, uh, when it comes to art versus, like, film they are pretty similar where illustrators and artists have to do the same things. And, you know, that's something that, that my professor challenged me to do is, Hey, like just, um, make like a hundred, uh, or a thousand thumbnails like that. And he, and they're like, yeah, send them to me once you're done. I'd I'd love to see that. Cause he's, he's got, he's assigned other people to do that. And, um, it's been really helpful for them. Um, and that's something that I just now remembered that I never ended up doing. (laughs) So that's, that's part of my homework that I should probably be doing every once in a while, even on streams. That would be fun. Um, as long as I'm having fun and learning, um, I can trick myself into, you know, feeling like it's time well spent, you know, cause it is, but sometimes it feels boring. Awesome. And we, we also want to give you guys another challenge this week. Um, last week we gave you the challenge of taking something that you drew way back in the past when you were younger an early artist, and to redraw it and see how it turned out. Um, we'll be posting ours on social media, whether that's through our Discord. I don't know where you're going to put your Zach, but I'll likely just put yeah. mine in the Discord, um, in my personal stream Discord, just to show everybody. Right. Probably the same um, as well. Awesome. But for this week, Zach, would you like to tell us what the challenge is? Yes. Yeah, so here's the little challenge. Um, so create a project. Find something you're interested in, whether that's the smallest thing. It could be like just designing like a new sticker or maybe designing a little new character. Something that's simple. Nothing that's going to make you stress or freak out. Uh, make it simple. Make it fun. Uh, and work on it every day for any amount of time, whether that's like five minutes or 50 minutes. Um, but sometimes i found if you start working for five to ten minutes, you usually kind of get more into it. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, and by the end of the project, you're, you're going to feel like you've done something. Just like I sta- we stated before with the projects we've worked on, we always feel great after we're done because it feels like an accomplishment. And you really can kind of feel like, oh, I progressed. Like even if it was just a small step, I progressed towards becoming better and, you know, actually making things. Because artists, you know, we're, we're kind of expected to make things and it kind of makes us feel good when we do that. Um, so, yeah, something you're, you're, you're working towards is going to make you feel like your artwork is improving. Uh, because each little project you do gets you closer to being a better artist. Um, so yeah, create that little project, work on it every day for just a little bit of time every day, and then uh, tag us on social media. All our media social medias are listed below if you've already forgotten them. Um, but yeah, be sure to tag us there and uh, show us what you worked on and tell us about the experience. Um, and 
you know, we, we do promise you that it's it's going to help you out like a lot. It'll make you feel better, you know, even in these times of uh, still uncertainty. Uh, you guys can at least control your artwork, you know. You can c control what you work on and you'll feel better for it. So be sure to tag us and we'll, we're really, really excited to see what you guys do. And don't be super stressed about these assignment challenges things. These are here to help you and these aren't supposed to be things to stress about. And whether your project is, I'm going to start working on a webcomic and I'm going to do the first chapter of my webcomic within the next month. Or, I'm just going to design a character over the span of three days and work on it for 30 minutes each day or even five minutes each day. Then that's okay. Just find something that you can work on, a project that you can work on, and specifically of, over multiple different days. Um, because having having working on or sorry working on it on multiple days makes it seem like well it puts you in the mindset of hey this is a thing i do this is part of me this is part of my daily routine i am an artist if you want to be a great artist then start acting like one now and that's not saying act like you're the best around but pick up the habits pick up the the routines that great artists have because if you, you're not going to become a great artist overnight, and you're not going to pick up all those habits overnight. you got to start them now. And that's one thing I've been trying to do and I've been struggling with is, is I'm like, I want to, I want to become a great artist. I want to become good at my craft. I want to become good at this and that, but, but I'm realizing I don't even draw every day. I need to get a lot better at that. And so, so that's, that's what I'm working towards is picking up those habits. And I, I want you guys to do that as well. And that's, that's what these challenges are. Yeah, they're they're supposed to be fun. So it can be as small or as crazy as you want. We can be very ambitious uh, as artists. Like I've experienced that this week, feeling like I have all the ambition in the world, but I realistically don't have the time. But just do whatever um, fits fits whatever schedule you got, and um, it can be the smallest little thing too. Um, it doesn't matter. And um, yeah, just just uh, I, like what what Lincoln was saying too is you know being able to state that you're an artist. I think that helps, you know, like the being of the podcast, I said, we're trying to, you're like, no, we are making content. And I'm like, you're correct. So that's something that I've been doing more of, like, as I'm streaming a lot on like, whether that's TikTok or Twitch, I'm always stating who I am and what I'm doing. And it's kind of evolved over time to the point now where I feel like it's my identity. And it's been helping me feel like I'm legitimate, even though sometimes it feels like I'm not. Um, and so, you know, make sure to make yourself believe it say i'm an artist out loud it it will really help you out when you're trying to do these projects because you really are you don't have to have some official job or some you know education or something to be an artist anyone can be an artist uh just say you're an artist and keep working on your art and that's all you need and if anybody tells you wrong then we'll fight them yeah <laughs> just kidding we will, we'll, we'll fight them <laughs> in the comment section because we're we're scared yes just send kidding. them to our comment section if, if they if they say you're not an artist you'll say i got permission from these random guys who podcast. yeah here's your digital pen pals podcast uh certificate of i can be an artist yes there's your artist pass we'll just pass it through the uh the headphones or the speakers <laughs> wherever you're listening awesome well thanks so much for listening we have some exciting news here at the end zach do you know what i'm talking about i believe so but um could you start it so i, I make sure <laughs> <laughs> yes it's the right thing <laughs> we officially have our first guest yes we do and she will be coming on hopefully next week's episode but yeah no guarantee that that'll be our, what, a christmas episode let me look at my calendar pretty that'll much be, yeah uh yeah that'll be the monday after christmas so with the holidays we can't guarantee she'll be next week we're currently working with her to get it scheduled but we're really excited because she's very talented and we're going to be talking with her about her and her lovely art. Um, hopefully next week. No guarantees, though. Yeah. And so yeah, forgive hyped. us for any any fault of ours because we've we've been um, I mean, this is only episode three. So we're, we're still learning like the, the sketch, like, you know, literally what we just talked about scheduling and figuring things out for time management and uh, scheduling with other people is, is another thing, too. So, yeah. Um, yeah, just uh, bear with us, and uh, hopefully by next week we'll be able to have our first interview on the podcast. So that'll be amazing. I'm so excited. That's going to be great. So thanks so much for listening once again. This has been Episode 3 
Thank you for listening. Call yourself an artist. Start those projects. Draw every single day. Do you have anything else to add on the way out, Zach? No, you guys are awesome. Keep going. I, literally, it's not as stressful as you think. Just just work a little bit at a time, and that's all you need. You guys we are awesome. We love artists. you guys. Yeah, we love you guys. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you next week. Later.